Welcome back to Aerial Farm. I'm Michael. I'm happy to report that my last couple of videos on solar power generation resulted in some great feedback and questions from viewers. A lot of the questions had to do with how do you use a solar power generator or a gas generator to power your home through a transfer switch. Instead of doing a step-by-step -step install video on a transfer switch, I wanted to do a brief overview of how a manual transfer switch works. So you'll understand that whether you're using a gas generator or a solar battery powered generator, you'll understand the operation of it and how it's very important to understand what your generator is capable of, and what your transfer switch is capable of in order to power the circuits in your home that you need to power. One thing I want to point out is, is that ideally before you buy a manual transfer switch or even before you buy a generator, I think the most important thing for you to do is take a good look at your home that you want to power and figure out which circuits in your home are critical in the event of a power outage. I'm going to show you my home and the circuits that I powered and which ones were critical circuits to me, and that may help you figure out what yours are as well. Unless you have experience and are qualified to work in your breaker panel, I highly recommend that you get somebody like an electrician or somebody that's a professional that can explain to you exactly how it works. Because sometimes there can be differences between breaker panels or problems in your breaker panel. And if you don't know exactly what's going on, it can cause a problem. And face it, we're, we're working with 120 and 240 volts, and that is enough electricity to seriously injure you and even kill you. And remember, anytime you're working in your service panel, you want to make sure that the power is cut off in the main breaker. And if you have a disconnect ahead of that, closer to the meter, that you shut that cut off so it prevents any electricity from coming into the breaker. Because just because you shut off the main breaker in the panel does not mean there's no electricity in the panel. It's still coming in from the main. Be very careful with that. And again, consult an expert or professional. Hire an electrician to do it for you if you're not comfortable. All right, I want to do a brief overview of just your typical transfer switch for people that maybe don't understand how they work or, or what's involved with them. I'm not going to show hooking one up. I'm just going to kind of give you the brief overview of how they work. And there's all different kinds of transfer switches. Some have one circuit, some have more than one circuit. Uh, but this one's a typical 10 circuit transfer switch. Uh, it's, it's a 30 amp circuit switch. So generally you can power uh, up to about a 7,000 watt generator if you can go through this and power 10 circuits in your breaker panel. Um, the way it works is basically each of these circuits represents a single breaker in your panel. And the switches for these circuits are three-way switches. So under normal conditions, when you're just running off the grid, all these switches will be turned down to line, which is basically just grid power. In the event the power goes out, the grid goes out, then you have the opportunity to, to hook up a generator, whether it be a gas generator or a, a solar battery backup generator, and you'll switch these switches all the way up into where it says generator. And this basically now starts sending power into your breaker panel, into each breaker in your panel. The, the beauty of this is, is that the reason there are three-way switches, the middle position of each switch is off. And so since you're disconnecting the line when you go to off and then turning on the generator, there's no way that the generator power and the line power can get crossed up. And that's, that's the purpose of a genera uh, generator transfer switch. And that's the safety feature it adds to your backup power source. So if you opened your breaker panel and found a, a typical 15 or 20 amp breaker like this, you'll see that it's put into the panel and there's a, usually a, a black wire going to it. And the way you hook the transfer switch up is each, each circuit in the transfer switch has two wires coming off of it, or generally a red one and a black one. And they're labeled typically with the letter of the, the circuit of the transfer switch. So, in order to hook up the transfer switch to the breaker, what you'll do is you'll simply take this, unhook this black wire. It's, it's, this is actually a wire in your house that's going to a, a light fixture or another circuit in your house. You'll unhook that wire and you'll hook this red wire in its place into that, into that breaker. And tighten that down snugly. Make sure you get it good, pull on it, make sure it's not coming out. Okay, and then this other black wire that's coming from the transfer switch, you're simply going to connect to that circuit wire in your house. Now, you, you, you can usually do it with a wire cap like this, but I, I prefer these Wago connectors. They're typically uh, uh, more secure and pretty easy to use. Um, you just simply insert the tip of each wire into the hole there. I can see it. And once you get them in, you pull these levers down. And now they're snug. They're not coming undone. And you can look in there and see that they're, they're properly connected. So now you've just hooked up this breaker 
to one of these circuits. And when this breaker's on in the, in the breaker box and you have this circuit down to say line, everything functions as normal. This might be the lights for your living room. But when the power goes out, you hook your generator up and then you go out and you switch this over to generator. And now the power coming through here is gonna be routed through this breaker. You don't have to go in the breaker panel and turn these on or off, you do it all right here. And again, I think it makes it safer. Uh, it, it, it's much more safer and it makes the generator a lot easier to use. You're not carrying extension cords through the house and running through windows and doors, which uh, you've got a generator, you've probably done that before. So uh, anyway, this is just how this works. And one thing to note is different transfer switches have different setups. Um, most of them are set up with individual switches and some will allow you to connect two of these switches together to make a 220 volt or 240 volt uh, connection. In that case, you would have a, du a dual breaker like this, where you have to have a wire from each circuit coming in to run that dual breaker. But you know, this is a 30 amp breaker, so you know, your typical generator is probably only going to have 30 amps, maybe uh, a little more. Uh, so what you want to do is really concentrate on finding the, the critical circuits, the critical 120 circuits in your house, um, identify those first, and we'll, That'll help you determine what size transfer switch you need, what size generator you need to power those circuits. Um, a lot of times people have a water well they want to power, and that'll be on, usually on a 240 uh, volt circuit, which is going to be probably 30, 30 to 40 amps. And so uh, that's going to take a, a big chunk of that generator power, and then what, that may use up two of these circuits, so that'll leave you eight, eight circuits left for individual uh, 120 circuits. So that's how they work. They all come with good instructions, and, and generally, if you have any experience working with breakers inside a breaker box, you can follow the instructions and they're, they're pretty thorough. But I think the most important part is to, to look at your circuits first before you get a transfer switch and a generator and figure out what you want to power and figure out what that load is going to be and then back into that with an appropriate size generator and the appropriate size transfer switch. Uh, once you get one of these installed and you have your first blackout, you're going to, you're going to look like a rock star because you can plug in your, your, your gas generator or you can plug in a, you know, a solar generator like an EcoFlow uh, Delta Max Pro or even the Cheapo Flow 3000 and that'll power through this and power those important circuits that are in your house uh, and again it makes it just so much easier it's so much easier um, so we'll take a look at the breaker panel in, in my house and so I'll show you how to wire it up and how I've got 10 critical critical load circuits and these circuits are all 120 volt circuits okay here we are looking at my breaker panel and I've marked each of the circuits the critical circuits with green tape those are 10 circuits I have out. Each one of those, if you'll notice, these here are 20 amps, one, two, three, four. And my transfer switch, I'll show you outside, has four 20 amp circuits. I don't have any any double pole breakers power through my, my generator transfer switch. But let's see what these things are. Starting at the bottom here, I've got my water heater, which is a propane water heater that only uses a small amount of electricity to operate. So I can have hot water running my generator. This right here is the power and plugs for our shop outside. I have a refrigerator and a, and a chest freezer hooked up to that. B would be specifically for my refrigerator in the kitchen. So now I'm powering the refrigerator and freezer in the shop, refrigerator in the kitchen, and our hot water heat with these three circuits. This circuit right here powers the lights out in our shop. So if I go out in the shop, I want to be able to have lights, and this powers that. It also powers some blood out there. This circuit right here powers the lighting in our kitchen and our utility room. So I want to be able to have lights. So I have those in the kitchen and the utility room. This circuit right here is our main bedroom. This circuit right here is our extra bedroom and bath. This circuit right here is our middle bedroom. And this is our master bath circuit. And this right here is our the family room circuit. Lights and plugs, 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 lights and plugs. And then these are all plugs. It's the power of twin volts. So there you go. Those are my 10 circuits, my 10 critical load circuits. I'm not powering my air conditioning or my furnace. I'm not powering any of these 220 volt loads. These red wires right here are wires that are coming from the transfer switch going into these circuits. And these caps right here are where the black wire that was in there is tied off to the black wire that was in the that came from the transfer switch. And out here you can see this is an outdoor transfer switch. And this transfer switch is weatherproof, so it can be mounted outdoors. It has a receptacle here for the generator. And you can see here all the circuits are turned online because we're running off the power in the house. Like I mentioned here, these are 20 amp circuits and these are 15 amp circuits. Your breaker box is set up similarly with two sides. Each side is 120 volts. You want to try, if you can, to, to balance the loads, the heaviest loads. You want some on one side and some on the other side of the breaker box and that will help. This is just 
like the other transfer switch, it's just an outdoor model that's a little bit different. So again, either one, you, may, you can use an indoor transfer switch with an outdoor receptacle, and I'll show you one of those. You can get an outdoor transfer switch if all your, all your inputs are going to be coming from outdoors. Or if you're using a solar generator, you're probably going to want an indoor uh, receptacle. So I would just get a transfer switch that has that built in. You can mount your transfer switch next to the breaker panel in your helm or in your garage, and then you'll be able to just plug your solar generator into that. Right here, I want to show you the most common generator cord. And this is a four prong. This part right here is what goes directly into the receptacle on the transfer switch I just showed you. It's four prongs. Two of them are hot, 120 volt, 120 volt. One's a ground, one's neutral. And most large generators that have a 240 volt output will have a receptacle on them for a plug like this. But not all generators put out 240 volts. So if you only have a generator that puts out 120 volts or 110 volts, say like one of these Honda EU2000, it's only 120 volts output and 13 amps. All you have here is a three prong typical 120 volt plug. In order to get the power from this into the transfer switch, you can use the, the cord I just showed you that's made for 240 volts, but you'll need to get an adapter. And that adapter will have you know, something like this on one end, and on the other end, right, it may just assume it has a regular three prong plug that plugs into that. So if this was all you had, you could go 120 with an adapter plug that goes to the four prong plug, and it'll just basically tie these two hots together, and 120 volts will go through your transfer switch into your, into your uh, breaker panel. Again, you're not going to be able to power a 240 volt uh, breaker, double breaker, so it's only going to do 15 or it's only going to do 15 or 20 amp power. In this case, you see here, it's only 13.3 amps, so you're probably only going to do 15 amps. Amount of amps and output the generators have are all different, so you need to make sure whatever generator you're looking at is what you can use. In this case, I've taken these two generators here, I've put them together and parallel them, which you can do with many different generators, and my parallel plug is a three-prong, this is called a, a TT30, which is typically what everybody refers to as, as an RV plug. Most travel trailers will have something like this. I wired the two generators into this box in parallel, and what I get out of this is 120 volts with 26 amps from the two generators. To use that cord I just showed you with this, I just simply use a three-prong plug to go into there. So my three-prong plug goes into the TT30 like that. Now this right here, I can plug my four-prong regular generator cord right there into that, and this goes directly into my transfer. Again, I can only run 120 volts, but I've got 26 amps to distribute through those 10 circuits. It enables us to really, you know, a small generator, uh, we're usually only using about 3,000 or less watts total. We can power, you know, all the fans, lights, uh, refrigerators, freezers, and everything in our house without much difficulty. And I can also do the same thing for, you know, four to six hours maybe off of my uh, solar battery backup without having to recharge the battery. Again, I, I just think generator transfer switches are a must if you're going to be using generator power. If you'll notice, this transfer switch here has a plug where you can plug the generator directly into it. Now, a lot of them will have a panel here, and this means you're going to have to find, an, you're going to have to get a separate uh, box to put outside for your generator plug-in, and then you're going to run a wire through the wall to the transfer switch. Most of these transfer switches like this are indoor transfer switches. They're not outdoor rated. So this will need to be indoors. And if you're running a gas generator, obviously you're going to need to plug it in outdoors because you're not going to put it inside the house and plug it in here. So uh, I've, I've retrofitted this transfer switch with an indoor plug because I'm going to use this for my solar. So it's battery backup solar generator. No gas, no carbon monoxide, no problem. I can put it in the house and just plug it right into there. So again, your generator is going to dictate what kind of transfer switch you need and what kind of inlet you need for the transfers. Back into that first, figure out the circuits, figure out the total watts you're going to need, roughly the amps, and see what kind of generator you need to do that. And my experience in the long run has always been it's better to go with less generator if you can because if you're in a grid down situation for any extended period of time uh, and you've got a five, six, seven thousand watt generator, you're going to be going through five to seven gallons of gasoline a day. And if power's out all around you and gas stations are closed, unless you have a huge store of uh, uh, gasoline, you're going to run out of gas pretty quick. Uh, that's why I, I converted to smaller generators, like inverter generators like the Honda. Uh, and I found those, those to be a lot more efficient and give me a lot better runtime. But of course, I've also reduced my, my power needs in the house accordingly, trying to keep that down to a minimum. And uh, again, planning your, your, your critical circuit loads and your, and your generator size and your transfer switch will make all that work smoothly when it comes time to have to power your house in a grid down situation. So I hope that answers most of people's questions about uh, generator transfer switches that, that had some. 
If you have any additional questions or comments or feedback, please leave them in the comments section. I really appreciate all the wonderful comments I've received on the other videos, and the feedback's been tremendous. I learned just as much from the comments as you learned from watching the video, so I think it's great. And please, if you haven't, hit that subscribe button and like the video. Hey, I'm Michael from Terry Hill Farm, where we're actually living two steps from off-grid.